more like concert settings and workshops? I definitely have. I honestly not not as much recently. I feel like there was like a like and partly there's I feel like there haven't been as many like big mass demonstrations as there was when I was like twenty something. <laughs> um, or whatever, you know, and like the anti globalization movement was like really kicking up and it just felt like there was like a big demo like every week or whatever. Um, but I think there's also a point at which there's like you know, the songs that I just sang, right, the old, like, the civil rights songs and the union songs, like, everyone in this room was able to pick them up and start singing them right away, even if you had never heard it before. Um, and we really lack songs like that right now. And I think part of it is, you know, there's, like, this rugged individualism that has, like, seeped into even, like, political music culture. Or even, you know, or the, like, if you look at, like, main, like, hip-hop, um, and, you know, like, the, probably, like, the most popular political music out there right now is hip-hop. Um, and like, and arguably some of the most participatory too, and that that's something that can like you know really like work at a protest in a in a concrete way. But I think like most most political music still has sort of a self like a self aggrandizing aggrandizingness to it, or a self awareness to it, where it's about like look at me, like I'm the hot political musician, and I and I'm this is a self critique too, you know, like and I do this with my own songs as opposed to being like how can I write a song that like they don't even need me there to sing. You know, and I think that's like the the key to like effective, you know, music that's not, you know, and the other music all has its role, and it's great for a concert setting or a workshop. But like great protest music, you know, is a different thing entirely to like you know a great a great verse or a great um, song that makes you think. It's it's all about what can people do, you know, and mass that gives them power. Um, and I think we just need to like focus on that in a concrete way. I don't know, maybe that helps. <laughs> The question just came in my mind, on my mind, like at the home festival, because mm -hmm. every year I tried to go, and um, and for me it was so weird to see so many amazing bands, marching bands, but no protest. Around. Right. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so, but it's a meeting of marching bands and no protest. <laughs> like, why? So it's like. Um, I went a last year and we did take over the street. They marched down the street and like took over the street. Like for a little yeah, while, but it's, it, for me yeah. it was like an uh, impression that's amazing in space to show up when, you know, what we are not agree with some, of something and that's it, you know, and, yeah. and like a lot of days for that and for me it was so, so weird to see that, like so separate, you know, mm -hmm. and I totally agree that capitalism is it's, it's a, a very visible and effective. We tried and to start I, a Whistler activist marching band and then support just kind of went away. Yeah. Like we had it sort of together and we took out a lot of drums and stuff. <laughs> and, and the other thing that I think is that it's, it's a gap that we don't have, but the samba, the samba and the carnival is started like by protest, you know that? Yeah. Like the samba started like of Afro religions, so they were like not allowed to make the, the circle of samba. So our religions, they have a ritual, but these, when they start the ritual, they do samba. You know, they do the, the circle of samba. So is that in the beginning of the last century, they, they, they were doing that in the streets all the time. They offering and dance and sing and, and on the streets. And they were not allowed. So the people are getting together and do like a kind of rallies. So the carnival started like that. So I think pretty much in our generation now, after like, like that, that generation, like now in Brazil, like just re, is uh, re, revealing that, you know? Because it's, be, it's very like a carnival way to do the protest, you know? So it's our beginning, actually. We're just like, come back to our roots without notice sometimes, you know? But it's pretty much our way to, to protest. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's one thing. You oh yeah, my thoughts are kind of like a fog now. That was that was awesome. Oh, um, mm. I'm an artist myself. Um, I do a lot of hip hop, yes. and um, I totally agree. You know, it's I don't know uh, what you said with capitalism and being an artist or whatnot, but I find myself, you know, being a hip hop artist. I do write about political um, activism and all that stuff, oppression. Um, there are too many words. You know, <laughs> there are too many lyrics that I put down, and you know, it's maybe I'm not trying to connect with um, other folk, 
I feel like sometimes I'm trying to connect with myself, with my internal oppressions, and validating it through my own eyes, in a sense. So it's, it may look like it's, you know, for a lot of hip artists, hip hop artists, it's like it's me, me, me. But um, I don't know, it might, I mean, music is a form of discharging as well. So, I mean, maybe, maybe that's what it, what it is. To some yeah, totally. You know, maybe it's, uh, I should clear, I, I want to make sure I didn't, because uh, I think I, I was talking about hip hop and then I was talking about like the sort of self importance of political musicians. And I wasn't meaning to peg that on hip hop because I think people do that all the time. They're like, oh, hip hop is so like this or that. And it's like, you know, music, <laughs> music and capitalism is so this and that. And hip hop is existing within it, you know. And so I wasn't, I didn't mean to single out hip hop in any way around that. But I totally hear you, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 hip hop is a bad rap anyway. <laughs> yeah. So it's all the time. You know, there's more than just one form of hip hop. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, what's, what um, seems um, kind of what is comes across very uh, um, beautifully uh, when listening to you is the um, is is the sense that you know you grow with your music. You know, and um, you are somebody who has been um, using music um, as a form of activism and as a form of, uh, as a way of articulating to yourself as well. You know, what, um, what the fuck is wrong? Yeah. But you've been doing it for a long time. And I think that, that there's probably, you know, and that comes across, that a, a kind of, you know, a political, Musical political maturity. <laughs> um, yeah, and I just think it's a matter. It's a it, it's a process. Of, uh, another question. Uh, when you first started writing these things, uh, you said that um, I remember you were talking about you know you can you know go in front of like a union in a skirt and perform something that they probably wouldn't agree with, but it's like. Yeah, how do you, how'd you get over that as artist? You know what I mean? Like, right. sometimes I'm like, damn, like, they're bobbing their head. But do they really hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, right. uh, you know, so how do you muster up? I like, so my, my like data point on that is that I'm pretty good friends with Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine. <coughs> um, and so like, they're like, are, you know, they were like one of the biggest bands of like, like ever, you know, and they play for like hundreds of thousands of people and they play these incredibly like, They've never pulled their punches. They never like tried to mainstream themselves in any way. And yet, like the vast majority of people that listen to their music are like jockey dude bros who, like most of us in this room, would probably like not get along with. Very well. um, you know, and, it, and, it's, and I, you know, I've, I've asked him like, well, how, like, how do you like deal with that? You're, like, how do you, you know? And he's like, it's all just like scale. And the same is true with me. Like, you know, there are tons of kids that listen to my music who are like. I don't know, like totally self-absorbed, like white folk punky kids who have like no critical race analysis like whatsoever, and like, but like they love, love, love my songs, you know. And there's like a point, you, you know, once we throw our art out into the world, we can't really control like what happens to it in a certain way, or you know, we can, we we can, and I think it, it it's all about like the intention at the root and like whether you know what our purpose for throwing it out there is. But I think there's like a question of tactics involved too, where it's like. What do you want to do? Um, you know, and, and like what Rage did is they like totally, you know, they signed the big record deal and then they sent like a million dollars to the Zapatistas so they could buy guns. <laughs> you know, and like that, that's pretty concretely like beneficial for like resistance movements. Um, and they never changed what they were saying to do it, you know, and so like that's like one tactical, like that's one way you can go. And I, I'm sure they, you know, like knowing them and knowing like how serious they are about their politics, I'm sure it was like a big, long, intense conversation about like you know like we're at this crossroads right like what are we going to do and you know they chose like that path um you know and so, but i think um to take it back maybe maybe that's like off topic for your question but i think uh, I, mean, I think like i think things always get through you know and like people might not immediately pick up on it but it's like they hear it you know it's like you know, if I'm playing in union halls or whatever, and like people, he, you know, I sing Solidarity Forever and a bunch of union songs, and people are like, yeah, and then I sing a song about homophobia, and people are like, huh? you know, but then like they, you know, but then like two years down the line, they, you know, meet someone else who's doing that too, and they're like, oh yeah, like other people who like care about the things that I care about also care about this other thing, and it like, you know, it, it gets through eventually, I think, you know, in, in a way, you know, 
You can't expect like immediate results. Although, but but I also can't tell you how many times people have come up to me and been like, I never thought about that. You know, and I was like, really? <laughs> but you know, but like you know, but like legit, you know, where it's like you know, you can really reach people in a, in a concrete Sometimes way. Sometimes we so. don't we don't we don't see art like an education way. Like we just see like the education like a systematic way, and we it's very like a, a organic organic uh, push. In, yeah. your, in your mind, you know? So I think, I think it's, uh, uh, Evan was the, the only artist that I, I've been seeing, like, around, the, you know, those kind of things, you know, in political movements or meetings, getting, like, it's like the only one. It's a really, really good push, because it's a performance, too. You need to be ready, like, to, not, doesn't, don't have any, 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 any response for the, the out audience, but it's a huge push, right. push for yourself and pushing them in others. You know, you know, like I saw Occupy. I'm gonna be brief. I saw Occupy in New York, and the fantastic thing that I saw there was how the people were like just one. Of, um, how can I say the the thing like like a domino thing? Domino effect, yeah. Domino effect in art like people doing art on the street. Mm -hmm. And they're like so like I wanna bring my guitar, you yeah. know? I wanna do a performance right now. Yeah. Because you know it's like a push and it's very effective. It's powerful. So it's necessary to just go through sometimes I don't feel encouraged <laughs> for that. Not in US. But I think you should push yourself to do that more and more and more and find a way to do it. You know, really fine. It's necessary. It's important. One one thing I, I, I forgot, this is like a whole section I was gonna get into, but I and I'll just try and give a super brief summary. But I think that like musician there's like a way in which political musicians need to be like super intentional about what they do to avoid kind of the situation we're talking about where people are just like bobbing their heads but like not getting anything. Where and it's like we can be really intentional. Like so I was gonna pass around one of my CDs because um, there, there's visual art on it that might be really interesting to folks. Um, and I partnered with this artist collective called the Beehive Collective, um, who did the art for it. Um, and so like all, and, and these are actually empty because I ran out of my liner notes, but generally all of my CDs, like I, the liner notes inside have the lyrics, but also like a list of like organizations that I think people should check out with like links and like um, some little like snippets of like, kind of just like, you know, I, I always write like a little letter like to my, to like folks who are listening. Um, and like what they, you know, just sort of like really concrete things like that. Or then like anytime, whenever I organize a tour, um, I book spaces and then I also reach out to community organizations in every city that I'm gonna visit and I invite them to come and table um, or and like get up and speak on the mic about like what they're doing. And that's beneficial to me too. I think this is like the other thing that like musicians need to understand is that like more people come to my shows because I do that um, than, if, than if I didn't do that. So it's like, you know, it's symbiotic. Um, and I think that, you know, and part of that for me is that I, you know, I was an organizer first, and then I became a musician. Or like it's always been like, you know, the two and two. And so I get both sides of it. But I think, you know, the organizing community needs to understand the needs and, um, yeah, the needs of musicians and, and other artists more. I think it's, you know, it's usually just like totally like not like thought of that like oh like musicians need to get paid or like musicians are are workers who like you know, like, shit's not free. Um, and, you know, so there's a sense that, like, music should be free, but, like, healthcare and housing and everything else is not free. So, like, mm -hmm. until then, you know, I'm down. Music should be free, but so should everything else. Um, you know, but, and so there, there's that. But then the flip side of that is that, like, musicians need to think more like organizers and think, like, okay, how can I, you know, I have this, this audience, you know, I have a room full of people who are listening to me right now, and how can I use that in a more concrete way than just, like, making sure that they like my music and buy my CD? Um, so that's something that I've I've struggled with. Um, I don't know, just trying to be as a, as like tactically effective as possible um, as a musician that like wants my music to benefit organizing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're probably out of time, right? Yeah. I think yeah.